All right, you guys, we are back. Jordan is back. She's got some visitors in the back there, too. <laughs> I see your pups walking around in the back. <laughs> Aw. Oh, got to love it. Oh, my goodness. Um, so we're on episode, we just discussed this, 18. So we're here. We, we made it. Um, you are alive. Barely, I'm but alive. you're here. Barely, yeah. I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> so be before, back, yeah, before we get into it too far, like, as always, subscribe, like, comment, all of the fun stuff. Make sure that you're following along because we're kind of getting back to normal sort of a little bit a little bit <laughs> so um yeah so today we just wanted to do kind of a catch up uh what if i haven't talked to you really in like almost like a two weeks at this point so um see how things nobody are going has. with you Clients, i know <laughs> nobody nobody has heard from me everybody's like are you okay where are you and i'm like i don't even have time to use the restroom right now so my phone is like not a thing oh god <laughs> it's a, it's it's um i can't I've, I've definitely moved before definitely changed jobs before i've definitely um done all that but i don't think i've done it all at the same time <laughs> When Brandon's do things, we do it. I know, right? It's like, like, geez Louise. Hey, that wasn't the original intent. Um, yeah. We definitely had, you know, a, a better schedule. But, you know, what do they say? When you have plans, God laughs, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yep. 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 If you want, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. That's that's it. That's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, we're in the car right now because we said that if we did not leave yesterday when we did, we were never going to leave. Um, yeah. So we just kind of left the gym. There's still so many projects to be done and there's that are, you know, supposed to be here on this day and not showing up and things like that. So finally, Drew and I just looked at each other two nights ago. And we're like, we have to get in the car tomorrow morning or we're never going to leave. Um, yeah. So that's just, that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah. So are you planning on, like, how long are you planning on staying in Arizona at this point? Are you like moving, moving or like, when are you going back to Florida? That kind of thing. So. Yeah, I'll be here until Cuties, and then um, I'm okay. going to fly out to Cuties, and then from Cuties, I'm going to go back to Tampa, and then I'll be in Tampa okay. for a week, which is also the week of the women's seminar, Sandy's women's yep. seminar in Orlando. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to I'm going to go to my hometown, which is two hours away from there, for Monday through Friday, and then I'll head okay. over to Orlando for the women's seminar. Um, after the women's seminar, I then have to go to Miami because my sister-in-law um, is pregnant; she's having her baby shower. And then um, from Miami, I'll fly back out to Arizona. Uh, not, not slow and done at all, are you? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Well, fun times. So yeah. in, in spite of all of that, I mean, I know obviously with construction and stuff, it's difficult to, to get things to go according to plan, but is everything kind of moving where you wanted it to? Like, are there like big problems that have come up, come up other than timelines or has it just been timelines more than anything? Uh, yeah, there's there's issues, and and you know, to be honest with you, it's it's very interesting that um, oh man, our generation man does not know how to work tools or read a tape measure. That's all I can say. Um, mirrors, like mirrors, for example, are very expensive, and yes. Drew mm -hmm. and I have spent lots of money on mirrors, and mm -hmm. so over the years. So uh, just for an example, the biggest issue yesterday was that we've had this mirror company come out. I don't know, five times over the last two weeks. And they had the same plan that we have given them 100. The first day that they came out, Drew literally had to do the entire job with the workers, meaning they could not oh God. work a tape measure. They didn't know how to hang the mirrors. Drew had to tell them how to do their job. The day that we got in the car and left, we said, what's the worst thing that can happen if we get in the car tomorrow and we knew that yeah. the mirror people were coming back for their second day and we said that the mirrors are going to get hung wrong and we we're like okay can we accept that if that happens or not we said that was the worst case scenario and it was worth it so we got in the car and left and they uh, mismeasured by two feet so one of the squat racks right now if you're squatting you see half of your face in the mirror and the other half is off the mirror oh no like what makes you think as a contractor that like oh, that, that makes sense right so yeah. just things like that you know and now i have to pay for more mirrors and yeah. there's going to be a scene there yeah. oh you know just the stupid things yeah. like that um uh other than that i mean it looks beautiful like if you look at it from afar when you're not the owner and you see all the yeah. little projects and things that need to be it's it's gorgeous yeah. it came out awesome there's still so much to do and things like that, but for where it is right now, it's beautiful. There's just still so much like little projects to do that only we can do because we know how to work yeah. tools and 
measuring tape. So it's just so funny. Well, it's, it's funny because like my, my husband's Spanish, right? So like whenever we get people to work on our home, we always get, you know, Mexican workers and things like that, where they don't really speak a whole lot of English, but we can communicate because my husband can communicate with them because they're the best workers. <laughs> I mean, it's right. just the bottom line is, is that they do the best work. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been very, 100. it's been very helpful because you're right. Like if we need somebody to come out and do like a quick fix it or something for like Angie's list or something like that, nine times, 9.999 times out of 10, they do it wrong. Yes. And it's like, and it's like, why am I hiring you to do, you know, and it's like, we could do it ourselves, but I'm trying to like, you know, not do everything. Well, yeah, you don't, you only have two hands. Like, I mean, you only have two hands and you only have so many hours in the day. You need, you need help, especially when you're building out like that. You know, there's only so much you can do through a YouTube tutorial. (laughs) Exactly. Which I learned, well, not me, one of my um, employees, Amy, we had this flooring that needed to be laid within 24 hours and everything unfortunately happened right before Christmas. So everybody's like, we're gone. Right. So Amy looked up a YouTube video and her and I laid a floor, two floors for 13 hours one day off of a YouTube video. And it's gorgeous. I mean, the floor is awesome. So you could definitely learn a lot from YouTube, but again, that was a whole 13 hour day that her and I took up. We could have been doing something else, you know, and this is, you know, Drew and this is our second, facility you know we're moving up we were moving out of our first one and drew and i just by ourselves did the first one i mean laid the flooring yeah. removed walls added um partition whatever and we remember it was hard yeah. but we don't remember it feeling this yeah. hard and i think the difference was is we didn't have as much equipment then. Oh, you yeah. know when we started we bought 10 pieces and then those 10 pieces we bought a little bit yeah. more and then when we could afford it we bought the prime and the arsenal equipment and those pieces are heavy and in our first um unit we didn't have double doors Mm. we only had single doors so any piece of equipment that we moved you had to break it down to get it in or out of the door and then we had to rebuild it in the parking lot then load it on the truck oh wow so you're you're talking about triple the amount of work right in the new facility there's double okay. doors so we that was like our number one thing when we were looking for new facilities like it's gotta yeah. have double doors because we are not I, I i told all of my staff i told all the members i'm not doing this again the next time i'm burning it down or i'm selling it <laughs> like we're done like i am not moving this equipment i'm too old for i this. know like, right you know but it's funny because people just come in and they you know they see all the equipment there and they just assume we paid for people to yeah. do all of this and it's like no we did yeah. everything you know those pieces are expensive i don't trust a moving company yeah. to be breaking it down and keeping all the bolts it's, it's so much like tedious work that nobody thinks yeah. about mm-hmm. um but i'm happy it's done yep. I'm very happy it's 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 done my body i haven't trained since in a week and a half um our our bodies are just fatigued yeah. and they just hurt yeah. like it feels like you have the flu, you know, everything is just so cramped. And now we're in the car for two days for 16 hours, both days. So we're just so ready to get into Arizona, get back into a routine, yeah. get us feeling better again, get on our normal foods, all the Well, that's going to be the next question too. So, I mean, that makes total sense too, as far as not training. I mean, you're definitely doing enough, enough just daily activity to do all that stuff. But how has been, how has the nutrition part of it been for you has been, has been really hard to keep up with. Yeah, it's been about 50 50 if i'm being honest you know like the days that we were stuck at the gym for all days like we were just ordering food yeah. and we probably eat out like twice you know pizza things like that i haven't weighed myself i don't feel good yeah. like you know it is what it is yeah. you know um life happens and that that i don't have time to make chicken and rice when i'm stuck at the gym for 20 hour days you know so um i'm my my goal is to get back into arizona this week finally get some rest yeah. we're going to be at jamie and greg's for the next couple of nights because the moving truck still hasn't gotten to arizona we still don't know when it's arriving or anything like that so we don't have a bed yet um so our goal is just to get there and rest for one to two nights just told through this yesterday it's so hard to think like with how bad i feel it's like am i ever able to train again like that's literally how i feel like yeah. um so just get some proper nutrition in some good sleep some good rest de-stress and then hopefully by sunday monday i'm going to be back to 100 percent again and, and getting back into the gym i'm really looking forward to that <laughs> well and that's a, that's the biggest thing because you're just out of your routine you know what i mean so you just yeah. don't feel like you're you don't feel normal for you you know no. i was I was, I was just looking at my, my previous um last year's progress photos for this time frame because this is when i had COVID last year and okay. i'm like 
I'm looking at my photos and I'm like, oh, I look like shit last year. Like right now, I, I like I don't know if you saw my update, but I feel like crap because of my period and stuff like that. Period. But in comparison yep. to to having COVID, it was nothing. I'm like looking at my photos from last year. I'm like, oh, I'm in such a better spot right now. <laughs> like because I was in that spot where you are right now, where I just felt like I'm never gonna be normal again. You know what I mean? Like. Like I this this time last year, the day after Christmas, I was in the ER because my headache was so bad from COVID that I couldn't sit up. Like I couldn't physically sit up. So it was like it was one of those things where and you know, you got the extra pressure, like uh cuties was coming up, use power from the stage was coming up, and I'm like, I can't be sick, you know. in two weeks I have my biggest event of the year. I can't be sick, you know. So it's just yeah. like you start getting all of that pressure put on top of you and then physically mentally all of it you can't you just you're like is this ever going to end <laughs> yeah you know the holidays add a layer of stress too and mm -hmm. it's just such a tough time of year which we talked about on the last podcast that we were on together and you know it's yep. it's it, the situation with me is one of those things you don't know what to expect until you're there and unfortunately it just got so chaotic so quick you know so you just kind of have to pivot um mm -hmm. but you know it is what it is it's just about getting back on track as soon as you can you know keep saying like you just you just it's gotta keep rolling forward and you know it sucks being um so good first for so long having kind of last 10 years you know it's something i can keep myself up about just gotta focus on and i know i'm gonna feel so much better once i get back into my normal foods and whatnot um so yeah but how's your christmas yeah my back yeah yes. we're back we got you we got you all right. I'm in so, the middle of like nowhere, Texas or New Mexico. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Well, I, I'm noticing like so your audio is fine, but it's the visual every once in a while just just freezes. So it's it's totally fine. I can hear you, no problem. So sorry guys. Um, <laughs> we're just getting we're just getting snapshots of your face every few minutes. Okay. Here. <laughs> It's all good. Um, but yeah, so I went up and saw my parents last week. Um, I was there for a few days and. Yeah, it was great. My dad was not expecting it at all. And like I was saying, like my mom is not very good at keeping secrets. So I was shocked that I was able to, to, to surprise him, to be perfectly honest. So she was over, she was like overthinking every little thing. I was like, mom, just sit there in the diner. I'll be there in just a few minutes. I was like, order, order dessert. I don't, I'm like, I'll be there in a few minutes. I'm just, just chill. So, but it was good. Like, um, they didn't, ex he didn't expect it at all. So he was really happy about that. And we just had a, we had a good time. We went and did a bunch of stuff and, you know, took them to dinner and all that kind of thing. Cause since they've been up there, my dad's been up there for his radiation treatments and he's doing it for like a month and, uh, they've not done anything, but go to get his treatment and go back to the hotel and go to eat. That's all they've done. And I'm like, okay, you guys gotta get out at least a little bit and do something. So we went to like an aquarium. We went and got pizza. We went to a couple different restaurants, things like that. So went to his, my dad's favorite thing is the Bass Pro Shop up there. It's like, this huge freaking Bass Pro Shop. So he freaking loves it. So we went there and we, we uh, went bowling and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, they had a good time. So it was, it was good. It was fun. And then for actual Christmas, I was home and we didn't do anything other than sit around and eat. That was it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I checked in with Jamie and um, I was like, I'm gonna be honest. I'm like, I didn't track hardly anything on Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, just is what it is. Um, you know, and then I got my, my cycle started the day after. Is it started the day after? I think it was the day after. Um, and it's been horrendous. Like today's the first day where I feel kind of normal. Um, the last, Interesting. Yeah, the last, like, well, and it's, so it's only been, yesterday was like the, sec, it was going into the second full day, which is about normal. Um, I, I really feel the symptoms hard the first day, the worst. And then the second day starts to, so it usually starts to get a little bit better. By the third day, I barely feel anything. Uh, not this time, <laughs> like all day yesterday, I was like, I can't like, it was, it was bad. Like I didn't even, I, I needed a day off in the gym anyway. So I just did some cardio and didn't lift yesterday. Um, and then today I woke up feeling a little bit better, just a little, but it's still pretty bad. Like as far as the cramps and stuff like that are concerned. So I'm like, I'm just, I'm just pounding my doll. Um, wow. And it's just like, I was saying, I was like, I think it's a, it's a combination of things like a, my, my period super late. So it started on the 40th day where it's typically starting on the 28th, um, like wow. on the dot, as we know, I'm very, very regular. Very regular. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think it's a matter of, okay. Cause this happened last year too. I think it was the 40th days when it started last year too, after my prep too. So it's like, 
I think my body's just like, okay, I'm getting all these nutrients back in. I'm getting all this food back in. My activity is changing. All of this stuff is changing. What the hell is going on? So I was, I was expecting it. And it was like this last year too. My, my first cycle after prep was really, really bad. So I was expecting for it to be bad. Um, visually, I don't look that bad. Like visually, I was like, actually, this isn't, this isn't bad at all. You know, you can see I'm bloated. You can see I've got, I've got water on me and things like that. I haven't gone up that much in weight. Um, but I just feel really bad, you know? So, um, today I started off the day in, immediately with my doll. <laughs> I was just like, we're just going to see how this goes. Um, I'm gonna, don't even take a chance. No, no, I'm like, we're just going to go. And it's just, it's a really, really heavy flow too. So that's like part of it, you know, I'm, and I'm slightly, slightly anemic as it is. And then you add that in on top of it. It's just not good, you know? So, um, absolutely. You know, just part of it. And like, I, you know, I have I have bad cycles sometimes, but I haven't had a bad one in a while. Like, you know, it was bad during prep during the during Hawaii, but that was because of all the other factors. You know what I mean? Symptoms. Yeah. Sure. So it was like, you know, you know, it's going to be harder when you're that lean and all of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So. um, So, yeah, so I'll be I'll be fine. It's just I got to get through these next couple of days kind of thing. Um. And like I said, when I checked in yesterday, I really wasn't mad at it. Like, I was like, okay, this actually isn't that bad. Like, I feel a whole lot worse than what it actually looks like. So um, I'm, yeah. like, I'm okay with it. Um, I just want my my body to level out in the next couple of days and then I'll be, and then I'll be okay. And like I said, like when I checked in, uh, Jamie kept my macros the same. She's bringing my cardio down more. Um, I'm going to get my blood drawn tomorrow to do my labs and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but because I'm on my period too, I'm gonna to have to get my labs done again. So, um, so yeah, so I'll go and get my labs redone again in two weeks, right before cuties, um, to test all of the like the estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, all that kind of stuff. Because of being on my cycle, um, those markers will be off a little bit when I go in tomorrow. So I'm gonna get it done twice basically. Yeah. Cause they're going to be on the, the lowest end for you right now being on your period. Mm -hmm. And then you wanted to do it. You kind of want to do it seven days after if you can. Cause I'm not yeah, peaking. I, so that means going before cuties. Yeah. So the, the plan is I'm hoping I can go in and get it done like the Tuesday before the, before the event, because then I can, and I, it won't be a bad thing either. Cause then we'll be able to see the change in the two, the two uh, blood tests too. So um, see if it's just a, if it's a thing or if it's my, it's because of my cycle and all that kind of stuff too. So, right. um, uh, yeah. So, well, and then we'll How's hopefully, going hopefully I'm in a good cuties? spot with everything. Good. Um, it's normal stuff. Like there's nothing out of the ordinary happening right now, but like, it's, you know, it's just, it's just the pressure is on. It's like, you got to get all the, everything shipped in. You got to get all the, the printing stuff done. Got to get all the digital work done. It's just everything piles on in the last two weeks. And, you know, you know, from doing the stuff with your gym, like nobody does anything during this time frame of the year. <laughs> it's like, it's like all of a sudden everybody's on vacation. It's like, nobody does, does anything because it's Christmas. It's like, no, 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 we still have to work. <laughs> like right. we still have to get stuff done, you know? So Christmas it's like. Christmas is over four days ago. We're, we're, we're yeah. all back to normal life now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and, and, but I know also from doing this for nine years, I know that if I try to get stuff done with people prior to Christmas, they're not going to do it either. So it's like, okay, we just have to cram everything into the last two, three weeks. It just, it just is what it is. It's like that every year. And it's like, everything's delayed because all of the shipping, as you know, like all the shipping is delayed during the holidays. So it's like when we should have stuff in this day, we get it a week later, you know, that right. kind of thing. So it's not, like I said, it's nothing's going awry. It's just part of the crunch time stuff that happens right now, you know, and you just have to be ready for anything because you're going to get something thrown at you. It just is what it is. So, you know, we, sh we, we have everything done custom, you know what I mean? We have the bags done custom, the, the suits, the warm ups, all this, everything's done custom. So when you're doing everything custom, <laughs> stuff gets pushed back. <laughs> takes time yeah yeah so it just it, and these are all the little things that i'm talking about yes. too that i experience right it's like these little things that just it's one thing turns into 20 yep. things like that absolutely and how many phone calls you have to do and follow-ups and there's so many little tasks yep. and it's it's overwhelming yep. it's a lot of work well and the other thing that was thrown on us this year is that we've had the same event coordinator at the ritz every year that we've been there well, he got promoted, so we have a new event coordinator. So it's like, well, that's great. That I'm glad you got promoted, Brian. But but come back. <laughs> like, yeah. Because you know everything. 
everything that we need. So, you know, and again, it's not been a problem with a new girl. It's just, she's new. She's not familiar with us. So it's like, you're asking you to re-communicate right. what Brian has already known for years. Exactly. And that's adding more work on your list. Yep. It's like, yeah. you know, stuff that we just assume is going to take place. We're like, oh no, we actually need this. You know what I mean? Like, cause we have to reiterate it again. It's stuff that we, that we haven't had to deal with since the first year. So it's like, hmm, okay. You know, just, it's just all, it's all, just all part of it. It's all part of it. People don't realize the stuff goes on in the back background. Right. Um, you know, as, as a small business owner, you have to do it yourself. Like you were saying, you have to put the floor down. It is what it is. It, you know, it, we have to get it done. And, you know, there's, there's the, the world doesn't stop turning. <laughs> it's like, you still have to keep moving, you know, you still have to keep doing everything. And then you have to run your business as usual anyway, on top of that. Exactly. exactly. It's like, it's just part of it. Cause that, and that's the reason why, like a lot of people are like, well, why don't you go to the, the women's workshop in, in Florida and stuff? This is why, because all of this stuff hits. And then right. it's, as soon as it's done, you know, we have to wrap everything up and continue with our business too it's like it's not stuff doesn't stop <laughs> it's like it doesn't, it doesn't just just we don't take pause like we don't get holidays you know like we're, we're sitting there on christmas day and we're outside you know smoking our cigars with our with our um uh fireplace going and stuff and dan's like i need to go inside and start and work on the welcome guide i was like no it's christmas just sit here <laughs> I was like, we are allowed to just sit here for a couple of hours. It's okay. Just sit here. It's okay. It's going to still be there tomorrow. We're still going to yeah. have to do it tomorrow. Let's just sit here for a couple of hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's all we get. You know, that's all we get as business owners. And people, people don't see that part of it. You know, people don't see that part of it from the outside looking in. All they see is the highlights. All they see is the finished product. They don't see all of the toil and turmoil that goes on behind the scenes to get there. Um, and again, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I, we chose this. This is what we love to do. But this is the stuff that people don't understand. You know, yeah. everybody like, wants to open up their own business, but they don't realize the sacrifice, you know, and that's right. That's everybody is asking Drew and I, well, what are you guys going to do for Christmas? And we're like, we're, we're, we're doing a gym. We're, we're here. And my yep. dad, my dad, one of them, he's like, you guys need a day off. I'm like, dad, I can't afford a day off. Yeah. I need to have people that are paying customers in this building in two days. This has yep. to get done. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, it's hard. And, and, you know, I did break down on Christmas. I love Christmas and this yeah. is now my second year. I didn't get a Christmas and whatever. That's okay. We ended up actually getting out a little bit early and we went to dinner and it was nice, but it's hard, you know, but yeah. again, I chose this and that's right. you know, it's just, everybody wants to be a business owner, but you have to realize that when you're an employee, somebody else is taking care of all of the problems and things that you don't even that's realize right. are going on in the background, that's you know, right. like account accounting and taxes and sales tax and you know and marketing these... and just dealing with credit card the, the the one thing we had to deal with this this uh this christmas was we did our little uh christmas sale like blowout sale well our back end server they decided to do an update so none of the purchases went through and we're sitting there and we're getting we don't know this we're getting emails from the girls that are trying to buy stuff they're like it's just it, it's not working we're like and this wasn't us, it was our server, it was them. They, they did an update that didn't, that all of a sudden now, none of the purchases that people were trying to make would go through. And we're like, what company would think that's a smart idea on Christmas when people are like buying and returning and- I know, yeah. I'm just like this. And it's, it's the same platforms that we've used forever. So yeah. it's like, it's not even something that we would think would happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But all of a sudden we're like, okay, we're, first of all, we're like, well, I guess this sale sucks because nobody's buying. <laughs> I guess like, this sale sucks. But then we're like, but what, what it was is it was a, it was a miscommunication in the, in the links. So like, if you clicked on one link, it was fine. But if you clicked on a link from another area from our, from our emails, it didn't work. So it was like, wow. if you clicked on just the direct link, if we sent you the direct link, it would work. But if you tried to do it from inside the, any of the emails that we sent out, they weren't working. It was like a, it was a disconnect in the, in their back end. And it was like, and that is a heart attack as a business owner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause yeah, then we start to, again, we start, you just call someone and you're like, Hey, can, right. you guys need to fix this. Right. Who do we call? Yeah. Who, Nobody. We, we call, we, we, we have to figure it out. We have to figure out what's <laughs> yeah. going wrong. You know? So yeah. that, that was what we were doing on, on Christmas Eve and Christmas day. That's what we were doing, you know? So it's like, is what it it's is. All, it is it's just all part of it it's like the saying is uh, everybody wants to go to heaven but nobody wants to die so that's what 
being a business owner is. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to be the, the do the stuff that we have to do in the background in order to get what we have at the end. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. And people don't realize it until they start their own business, and then they're like, "Oh shit, okay, got it." <laughs> it's like this. Uh, this is not as as easy as it looks from the outside. Yeah. And, you know, we could talk, you know, small businesses closing left and right. You know, we could talk yeah. about the economy and things like that. But Drew and I are very firm on, you know, business plans. You know, when we yeah. created Push uh, years ago at our dining room table, Drew had everything to the dollar mapped out yeah. and we missed one thing. It was a deposit for uh, the energy company. They wanted a $3,000 deposit, non-refundable for the life of your business. We didn't know that that was a thing. That was mm. the only thing that we didn't have accounted for in our budget but a lot of people don't even start business plans anymore they just go in with x amount of dollars and they build a business and before they know it they're halfway through construction and they're out of money yep. or they start the business they don't realize all the things that they have to buy up front to make sure that they have product and things like yep. that and that's why these companies are going downhill because nobody knows how to manage money or manage a business properly yep it's really it's it's really scary <laughs> or it's like they put it all on one platform like you know with the way that facebook and instagram and google they change the way that you have to advertise with them all the time well if you've only gotten your leads from google ads or something and then they change their algorithm they change how they do their ads you're screwed you're out you know yeah. you're done yeah. because you can't generate yeah. leads anymore yeah you know if instagram shut down tomorrow there would be a lot of people out of business because they have no way of generating any kind of clientele yeah. Ain't that the truth? We were, we were listening to music last night and do you know the artist you were talking about? There's some artist that Drew was talking about that got famous because of TikTok and yeah. um, her family dumped a bunch of money into her TikTok film so that she had backgrounds and outfits and p pushing out the advertisements. And she ended up being famous and has now mm -hmm. an album, but Drew was talking about, can you imagine the amount of money that this per yeah. that these parents spent on TikTok? Yeah. to get her out there and it worked but how many other families do this yep and what is wasted what works what doesn't we were talking about that last night just how crazy social media is but what if it all of the so mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's well you look at you look at some of these people too like the, and this was me for a little bit i used to get paid for my reels and stuff on instagram like they, i would actually get actual payments from instagram and there's a lot of people that are out there that are like that. They get paid from different platforms. So if they start changing what their requirements are or whatever, then you're no longer getting paid from them. Well, guess what? That you're not a business owner at that point. You are an employee of Instagram. You are an employee of TikTok. You are an employee of Facebook, whatever it might be. You know, I was only making a few hundred bucks a month. It wasn't a big deal. But then my reels got demonetized because they were all posing reels. And now, you know, Instagram hates freaking butts being shown. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, so I got demonetized after whatever it was, it was eight months, six months, whatever it was, I got demonetized. So it's like, <clears throat> you're not actually a business owner if you're in social media, by the way, you're right. not. I think it's right. They can take the carpet <laughs> out underneath you. You have zero control. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden your income's gone. Right. All of a sudden your income's gone. You know, yep. you see it all the yep. time. People get people get banned on YouTube. People get banned on TikTok. You know, all this kind of stuff for posting something that's against their community standards or whatever it might be. Um, I know I've noticed this recently that um, Facebook is going back through and and flagging stuff from years ago. You know, one of the girls posted something about that on her on her her um, Facebook or whatever that somebody reported her stuff. I said no, nobody reported it. I said it's it's the, it's the bots in Facebook that are going through. I and didn't doing know that. that. That's crazy. Because they went into like the bots went into our Q's Carp and Stage group, the private Facebook group that we have, and like reported all of our posts inside of that we made inside of our group. We went it's report, a private we, page. I know. Like the people are accepting to see whatever is in there i know i know so we went, i mean we went through it and disputed everything and got everything back but it's still like that was the bots going through and just like oh something something triggered the bot and then it just goes through and just hits everything you know i, so I love like, when you post and you're like i have to post it here because instagram is definitely watching me take yeah. my stuff down. anytime so that was the crazy part i was saying i was like my in, my uh engagement on my instagram when i was in hawaii went through the roof went sky high right and i was like oh this is awesome right by the time we got to japan it was tanked because they they flagged everything and i was like wow okay i thought i was like i was getting away with it for like a week <laughs> 
like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, get, I gotta, I gotta go fix it. Yeah, I know. It's like, because that's what happened. So this is a little trick, by the way, because I figured this out through them recording my my butt being shown and my posing videos and all of that. So what happens is, is the bot will pick up on one of them and then it will pick up on like six more or whatever it is, however many you got, you've posted up. So if you go in and you dispute it and you delete one of those posts that they've, that they flagged, they will reinstate your, um, your visibility and all of that too. Right. So I, I'll always go in like that. That's why like if you do a carousel, I'll delete one of the, the gloop shots, like the progress shots from my carousel and it will reinstate all the rest of my vis visibility by doing that. Right. And okay, then so you don't lose everything. Yeah. So, because what they're seeing is that, that it, again, it's all just, it's, it's not a person. It's a bot doing all of this. It's their AI. It's whatever. So, so they see that you're trying to take down stuff. So they're like, okay, we're going to reinstate that, you know? So, so you only lose like one slide on one of your posts and then everything else gets visibility again. So you can do that. But then as soon as they catch another one, it'll do it again and you have to do the process again. So it's like, I, I just got to the point where now I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna post any of my glute progress or my posing or anything like that on my page. If you do it in your stories, it doesn't matter. They're, they're not flagging you at this point. Anyway, that could change, you know? Um, and you still get lots of visibility on your stories. Yeah, I do. And my, my visibility on my stories has gone way up too. So I'm like, it is what it is. I'm like, I, I get engagement off the stories. So that's that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. this, you know, this as long, and again, it's just like, you can post anything as, as long as, long as it's not your freaking glutes, but if they see a butt in a bikini, then you're, you're, they flag you. <laughs> what, about, what about a gymnast with her butt or yeah. I don't know, like other sports, like this is our sport, you know, it's, know. it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And it's like, but it's, and it's across the board too. So a lot of, um, and it's it just, it's what it is too, is just the visibility to people that don't already follow you. So if they already follow you, it's not hurting you, but you can't you can't reach more people. And the whole point right. of being on those platforms is to reach more people. You know, Absolutely. like that's the reason you're there for most people anyway. You know what I mean? So um, so if you don't care about reaching new people, then it doesn't matter. But I do. I mean, I want to I want to have vis visibility for for new people coming in. So. Now, is that why people will add the subscription button to their profile? Because you could post whatever you want on there? No, because the su subscription profile thing is, is still, it still has regulations. You still have to, oh, okay. you still have to do that. You're not going to get visibility to new people. Again, you'll get visibility to the people that already follow you. Right, but, right, right. But you'll get restricted so that you can't reach new people. Same thing. Wow. You can't Because I looked into that. I was like, maybe I'll just do subscriptions. But then when you look at the, the community requirements and stuff for subscriptions, it's the same, same as if you were to put it on to your, your main feed. So it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Yeah. So stupid. So that was a little tangent. But anyway, it's just frustrating. Yeah. yeah that's okay. We're, we're, we're talking about business today. I the know, bikini. right? Behind the, bikini, behind the bikini business. There we go. That's what we're doing today. That's it. <laughs> that's totally not what we were planning on talking about, but I just got just got no. on a tangent with that whole situation. So um, everybody's like, "Wow, that's interesting." I know, right? Um, but what I did want to ask, um, so okay, so just to kind of wrap up, I'm still reversing. Would you consider yourself being like still reversing kind of thing, or are you in like a maintenance area? Would you say probably in a maintenance area at this point? Okay, yeah. I'm still, I, I, I'm at the point now where I think my caloric intake is still going to go up a little bit um, once we get through the holidays and stuff like that, but my cardio still needs to come down a little. I'm doing 25 minutes, five days a week at this point, so, okay. which isn't bad. And usually in the off season, I'm doing like a couple of days of 15 minutes kind of deal. And at the end of the day, I like being able to do cardio anyway. I just like being able to get the blood flow going and all of that. Me so. Too. I'm okay with it. I like to keep some cardio yeah. in, in the off season. I think that when we, when I do none, yeah, that's never good for me. Like even like internal health. Yeah. So I like to keep a little bit of cardio in an off season and just, I don't know, makes me feel good mentally, yeah. you know? Agreed. And I'm not saying that I have to go like, <clears throat> you know, all out and balls to the wall or anything like that, but just get the blood flow going, get the heart rate up over hundred, 115, yeah. 130, you know, whatever, wherever you sit, you know, my typically when I'm in season, it's like 135 beats a minute is where I'm trying to, to aim for but like even in off season just getting it up to that point you know so that you can get a good sweat going you can feel yep. like you're alive yep. <laughs> you know what i mean more than anything so um and and for me too it just i feel like it helps me keep my body composition in a good spot as well 
Um, I don't know. I just feel kind of lazy if I don't do it, I guess would be, would be a good way of saying it. Um, and it's not, and I don't, I don't know. It's, I think where it comes into play too, is like, if it's hindering your growth, as far as your lifting, then that's when you have to kind of cut it back you know, but if it's not, and you're still seeing your, your growth happening and things like that, and you feel good about it, I think that there's a, I think there's a happy medium there in that, in that regard. Absolutely. And you nailed it right. And if you're still doing, you know, that's affecting your glutes sessions and there needs to be a change that's made. Um, also too, though, the mental side right. of it, like I like doing cardio because I like to feel good, but some girls are like, I have to keep doing cardio to stay lean. That would be something that you maybe want to talk through, yeah. you know, with your coach and, kind of navigate. Um, it is, it's, it's, I think it's important to keep some, like some of my girls are just on a step count per day, but they have to do 10 minutes of yeah. treadmill walking to hit the step count. So it gives a little bit of yes. cardio, but it also gives them a step count to hit. And that's what Jamie does for me. So my, my steps are 9,500 per day. I usually have to do at least 10 or 15 minutes of cardio to hit that every day. Yeah. Um, so, so it works, you know, and it just yeah. keeps, keeps me in a goal, but it's not something that's so intense that I'm like, oh, I have to burn calories. And it's, right. no, it's just to get in, do some moderate intensity, steady state, and yeah. just get your heart moving a little bit. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's um very person dependent too, because um just based on what just what you said with the 9,500 cal or steps per day, my steps are at seven seven k. So <clears throat> if I hit seven k, I'm good. But again, I maintain my weight at that activity level right so like if you're not maintaining your weight then you probably need to increase your step activity or whatever it is that you're trying to do you know based on your goals so it's not like you should be doing 10,000 steps a day when you're in off season uh, or 5,000 steps a day when you're in off season it's whatever is is going to help you with your goal right so absolutely um like i you know when i was in on season my steps were 10 to 12 you know what i mean and that's that that was in season, you know? Right. right. Um, so everybody's gonna be a little different. Everybody's gonna be a little different with that. So it's not like there's a specific amount of activity you should be doing. Because you know, everybody's everybody's different as far as how their body composition is put together, but it's also different based on how much activity you do throughout the day. I don't have a very active day to day day because I'm work from home, you know? Right. So right. my my activity levels go up when I'm at a show because I'm walking around and moving all day long. You know, but when I just on a, you know, six day a week average, it's not very high when I'm just absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. And you know. I have a couple of clients where, you know, everybody's different. I have two clients that they have zero cardio in their off season, no step count, no cardio, and they just maintain their lead, their leanness. Mm -hmm. um, one of them lives in Georgia and she just walks everywhere in Atlanta yeah. because she doesn't want to drive. So her step counts up to like 23,000 a day without even trying. Yeah. And the other one is taller like you and just yep. a metabolic freak. I mean, her yep. food is so high and she just maintains her leanness, but there's most people that cannot do that, you know, that's right. and that's where you have to really be individualized as a coach. And, you know, some, sometimes I accept new clients from the, you know, within fit body fusion or things like that. And they're all on this, this 10 K step count, yeah. everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, no, it's like, let's, let's look at your activity. What do you do for a living? If you're a nurse, to me yeah. in the off season and you're getting 10 to 12 K steps a day without trying, that's a good form of cardio, you yep. know, but it is, it's definitely person dependent and men mentally and physically. Yeah. And I will say this, my hunger level is finally starting to go down. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm good. like, huh, I think, I think, you know, a, you know, coming out of contest prep, but then going into the aspect of my cycle as well. So I think, um, you know, I mentioned that last week that my, my hunger started spiking again. And I think it was because I was going into my cycle, getting ready to start. And now that it's actually hit, I'm like, okay, my hunger level is finally starting to go back down a little, you know, I'm still it's hungry. Funny. Mine started to rise. Yeah. Stress. So I think you know, stress. And I think that my body is trying to recover and I think <laughs> it's, I really do still think it's trying to throw period. So We'll see, but yeah. yeah, my hunger cues are going up. But I'm like, why? Why is this happening? It's hard. Yeah. It's so yeah. yeah. It's that's that honestly, that's the hardest thing for me is the hunger thing. So now that it's starting to come down a little bit, and again, it's not it's not normal yet, but it's definitely way better than it was just a couple of weeks ago or even just last yeah. week when I started to spike a little bit. You know, I got <laughs> it's funny, I was out I was out with my parents and I was like, 
I, my dad, I, when we were leaving Bass Pro Shop the one day, he's like, well, we can get something here. We could drive back towards the hotel and find a place there. I'm like, I don't care. Let's just go eat. <laughs> I, was like, I was so hungry. I was like, dad, <laughs> I was like, we just need to go someplace. I cannot make that a decision food. right now. Yes. Uh, I was like, exactly. we, we, let's just drive down the road and stop. <laughs> Like I need food. <laughs> like it gets to I'll that McDonald's point. at this point. Yeah. You get yeah. To that I was point. like, I just, oh, yeah. oh Lord. Yeah. That's it was the bad. worst. That, that's what I hate about not being in contest prep, you know, and like being at like six people and everybody's like, what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? So I made the decision days. First day, nobody liked I picked. Second day I said, is this what we're doing? Cool. Everyone got with it. And then the third day, everybody's like, Jordan, what are you ordering? I go, no, 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 no. I did two days. Somebody else did. <laughs> I am done. Yeah. I hate that decision. You know what's great about being on prep? Nobody asked me what I want to eat because I already have my food. That's what I miss. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was and for me too, like I get it. People are trying to be like, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, aware of what I what I I'm like, you don't understand. I'm like, anywhere we go, I can find something to eat. Like anywhere we go, I can find something that will work. You know, not so yeah. much when I'm in the last month of prep, but every other time I can find something that's going to work with what I need to eat. You know what I mean? So I'm like, let's just go somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, I need someplace so I can feel like I'm going to have food in the next half hour because I need it exactly. right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get to so, that point and it's like, just, just somebody feed me or else it's yeah. going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I wanted to go ahead and ask you a few questions. I answered a few questions on the podcast last week by myself. So I just wanted to get your two cents on these. Um, so the first question that I answered was there was a girl that was interested in um, how do you prevent muscle loss after breast augmentation surgery? So I just wanted to get your kind of your two cents on that thought on that thought there. Uh, well, the thing to realize with the breast augmentation, it's funny. One of my best friends just texted me. She got a breast augmentation yesterday. Oh, um, yeah. They, they called her and they're like, hey, you're supposed to come in in two weeks. You want to come in tonight? So she did. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So the thing about breast augmentation is you have to realize that, listen, you're making this decision and, you know, you're not going to lose too much muscle in the mm -hmm. six to eight week period of recovery. Now, it depends on the type of breast augmentation. If you're literally just slicing, putting in, putting in an implant, closing, very, very simple recovery. If there's yep. cutting and tugging and things like that, that's a little bit different. Yep. Um, so, I mean, for my breast augmentation, I, I had a very easy recovery. Mm -hmm. I probably could have been back in the gym lifting lower body two weeks after, mm -hmm. but I waited till week four. Um, my surgeon was, um, the, the, the surgeon for, uh, WWE. So he was really, really good with athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the thing to, to realize is you're probably not going to lose as much muscle as you think you are. Um, I tell, I tell people all the time, just because you're getting surgery is not an excuse to eat like an a-hole. Yeah. If anything, it's the time to keep your nutrient dense whole foods and to try to stick within your macros so that your body can retain the tissue and stay as consistent as possible while training is lower. I have taken so many girls through post BA recovery most of the time I don't even need to drop their food for their weight to maintain as long as they stay on their macros. Sometimes I do. Um, but something that I look for is their musculature and nine times, what, nine times out of 10, they keep, they keep their muscle. Yeah. Um, maybe they lose a little bit in their shoulders here and there, but you also have to think too, you're going to go a little bit flat while you're just kind of laying around and you're not pumping the water, sodium carbs into the muscles. So you're going to feel a little bit more soft and flabby, but the muscle's still there. It's just not as full and yes. hard as it usually is. Yes. So how to maintain it? Just keep up with your dense whole foods. Don't increase or start eating foods off plan and be patient. You know, you got to just keep tr trusting the process. Yep. You literally said exactly the same thing I did. <laughs> hey, we know like, what we're talking I'm about. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you're like you're you're a coach, Sean. You get it. I know, right? I was like, well, I said the same thing. I was like, you're really not going to lose that much. And I said the same thing. Um, you may look a little, feel a little soft, but that's about it. You're not actually losing muscle because it's only a few weeks. You know, breathe through it. You'll be all right. Like I talked about having COVID last year. You know, it sucked staying out of the gym, but I really actually got better afterwards because my body needed the break. So 
you know, it is what it is. Um, so the, ne the next question was, uh, how do you feel about athletes photoshopping on Instagram? Uh, how do I feel about athletes photoshopping on Instagram? <laughs> um, I have a hard time with it. So, okay, what what photoshopping are we talking? Right? Are we talking about um, changing exposure and brightening and lightening? Yeah. Fine with that, right? If you're altering the yep. color of the image or the background of the image, no problem with that. That to me yes. is like creativity. That's 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 a different kind of editing. If mm -hmm. you are an athlete that is altering your physique, I think I, I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I have a big issue too with the you know more of the the higher level athletes that have people looking up to them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to remember as IFBB professionals that we have a lot of people that look up to us on Instagram that follow our journey and compare themselves to our journey. That's not our problem that somebody's comparing themselves to us, but it is our, our problem to responsibility, or our responsibility to show yeah. up as a professional. Yep. Um, and at the end of the day too, if we're pros, we have to realize that our physique, no matter the time of season is a top level physique. You know, like, you know, Drew tells me all the time in my off season right now, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. He's like, honey, you have to realize that you're still in shape more than like more than half the country, right. you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's about, you know, and I get to the, we all have our insecurities and things that we want to fix. But again, I think as carrying that title of a professional, this is a responsibility that we hold to show up in our realest and truest form. Mm -hmm. um, plus the fact that it's so easy now for someone just to look up on NPC news online or another other look, look, on these other forms, you know, if they're posting things on Instagram and then they post in the same spot, it's very easy to kind of see what's real and what's not. Right. So I do not agree with it. I can promise everyone here today that you will never see me altering a photo because I don't even know how to alter <laughs> light on my photos. I am <laughs> like old when it comes to technology. Um, and I, hold very, very highly the responsibility that I have to the youth athletes at my gym that look up to me, yeah. to all of my followers on social media, to my clients. And I think that we all need to be better at that. Yeah. You know, there's there there should no, be no altering of your physique yeah. that you're posting online. And that's, again, that's essentially what I said too. Um, like the other part that I brought up as well is that as a consumer, you need to be an educated consumer and realize that this kind of thing, if somebody's trying to sell something using their own body and things like that, marketing and deceptive marketing and things like that have been around since the beginning of time. They they have. Yeah. Wow. That's a great point. So, yeah. you know, as a consumer, you need to be an educated consumer as well and not take everything at face value. Right. So, yes, I agree. Us as the athletes, as the people putting the putting it out there and stuff like that, we need to be responsible for that. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that aren't. And as a consumer, you need to realize that there are a lot of people that aren't, you know, and not just to yeah. buy something because it looks cute or whatever. Go research, go look at what, what they're, if somebody's trying to sell you training programs based on their own transformation, like go figure out if they had a coach, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Go figure out if they're, if they've actually done this with other people, you know what I mean? Look at their, their tagged That's photos, a great point. you know, all those kinds of things. So you can't just take everything at face value, right? Because yeah. I would say, while I agree with you as far as our responsibility, there's a lot of people that don't, <laughs> you know? And you have to realize that as a consumer, you have to realize that. You have to realize that not everybody out there is going to be on the up and up. So you need to take some responsibility for your for your own purchases and your own well-being as well. That's a great point, you know, about um, is there a business attached to yes. this post or what, per you know? and sponsorships and things like that, like that, that is very telling. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, I, I agree with that. You know, people that are trying to buy eBooks and mm -hmm. thinking that if they buy this eBook from this one professional, they're going to look like this professional. That's right. No, there's training that goes into that. There's food that goes into that. Yep. There's supplements that go into that. Just because you buy the book and do this process, it doesn't mean you're going to look like your favorite Olympian. Yes. Um, so yes, I think, I think that's a, that's a, that is a great point. Yep. As a consumer, you have to 
do your own research on what is your goal that you're trying to achieve Mm -hmm. and who's the person that's going to guide you there. And we've already talked about this multiple times on the podcast, just because something's a great athlete. Now they're a coach does not mean that they're a great coach. Right. I did a wonderful consult call a few days ago. Still haven't heard from her because she's probably still doing her research. She wanted, she asked me up front, could I send her 10 profiles of my current clients Mm -hmm. so she could reach out to them and talk to them? And I was Mm -hmm. like, Sure. She goes, I want some of your lifestyle clients. I want some of your top level national clients. I want some of the people that just started with you. Do you mind sending me that? I was like, no. So I sent her 10 profiles and she's probably still reaching out to people. That's her doing her homework. That's That's a lot more homework that somebody that that the majority would do. But is that a little bit more time consuming for me? Yeah. But you know what? If she does sign up with me, she's going to be a great athlete. I already know. That's right. That's right. But she's doing her homework. that's a completely other, other separate side of the, of the coin too, but it's like you as a, as an athlete coming into it, you need to realize that just because you purchase a plan, you're not going to just automatically become that thing that you want to be. You got to put your, put your work in. You got to actually too, so. do the plan. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh. That's, that's a whole other, a whole other topic, but just, yes. just putting that little nugget out there you can't just expect it for it to poof magically appear. Yep. <laughs> a lot of but, people do. A lot of people but, do. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I, you know, at the end of the day, again, I, again, we pretty much agree agree on the whole photoshopping thing too. So there's that. Um, next question was, uh, what would you say to somebody who wants to go pro but they need to nationally qualify again? What would be the path that you would tell them to take? But they need. That depends. What's, Sorry, what's it cut the out. Context. Okay. If they want to go pro, they need to get nationally qualified again. Yes, they they want to become pro, but they want to they they have to get nationally qualified. Well, my first question or my first response would be a question back to them: Is the last time that you were on stage, what was your feedback, and mm-hmm. have you done what you needed to do to? capitalize that how many years has it been Mm -hmm. since you've been on stage months whatever has the criteria changed a little bit so even though you got the feedback from maybe Mm -hmm. two or three years ago what's the criteria today and do we look like that so ultimately Mm -hmm. it's about doing your homework watching the national shows seeing what they're awarding or not and are we Mm -hmm. close to that you know and giving yourself as much time as you need to You know, Mm -hmm. some people take a little bit longer to turn pro than others. And I think that you have to get committed to your journey. I would also say don't waste time just showing up at nationals just to show up at nationals. It's time Mm -hmm. wasted growing. It's money wasted. And ultimately, you're just pushing your timeline back from going pro. I would rather Mm -hmm. stay in an off season for two years and come out the third year and turn pro and get the goal that I seek versus coming out year after year and maybe now turning pro on the fourth year because I wasted time dieting down just to keep getting the same feedback. Yep. Yep. Well, and I said that same thing, but if you're not even nationally qualified yet, you shouldn't be looking at the pro stage. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you need to focus on where your feet are, you know, be where your feet are, focus on actually winning at the local level first. And then you can decide where to go from there to go to, to, the national circuit to go to the pro league because there is a huge 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 difference between winning at the local level and winning at the national level and then even doing anything at the pro level and then from the pro level to the olympia level too it's just vastly different every level that you go up so it's almost like trying to skip a step if you're going from not even being nationally qualified to being a pro you can't you, yeah. you can't do that you, you got to take it step by step right yeah so you know you, you have to like you were saying are you even fitting the criteria locally first, you know, figure that out first and then and on what type of stage, Yeah, you know, I don't want to take anything away from anybody. You win that day, you win that day. But yeah. if we're talking about a pro card, right. When you step up on the stages and na- on a national stage, you are about to win a- you showing up a professional. Yeah. So let's take it to where you mm-hmm. got nationally qualified. And again, I'm not taking anything away from anybody. A win is a win, but if you won, yeah your class in the middle of Iowa with a class of two girls and you were first place. Was that show competitive enough to tell you if you are able to get on a national stage and do well, right? 
Now, right. if you went to a bigger show like out um, out west or you know a clash series, and you have about eight to ten girls in your class, and you win that class, mm -hmm. now we could mm -hmm. talk about if that was more of a competitive type field or not. Yep. So just because yep. you win your class at a local show does not mean that you are ready for nationals. That's right. Judges too. Like sure oh, the judging yep. panel, right? Like if you're in the middle of a show, again, I'm just saying a smaller town, in the middle of Iowa. Those judges are typically not your national judges, Olympia type judges. They're smaller local judges, which is That's fine. Right. But you typically want to get in front of those national level judges that are going to see you again, because those are the ones that are going to be giving you the feedback like, hey, you did win the show today. But mm -hmm. if you want to get on stage at nationals, you need a lot bigger glutes and a lot bigger shoulders. And da, da, da. like they're going to tell you what they want to see out of That's you. That's right. So That's right. just taking a honest check with yourself of when you won that national qualification qualification if you had less than three girls or three girls or less in the class you probably need to try another regional show yep. to really see how you stack up with good athletes and top level judges yep and that's and that they don't really classify this like this anymore i kind of do but um there's a difference between a local show and like a regional show you know like a, a local show is just your back iowa type of show right um yes. regional is a clash you know what i mean yes um, I did that when I was in NPC. I went, you know, I would win everything locally because it was me and like two other girls that showed up. <laughs> so, and then, but I went to a regional show and I did shitty. And the, I mean, the judges there are, were pro judges and they, and I was already signed up to do a national level show in two weeks from that date. And they're like, well, you're already signed up. So let's help you at least look decent when you show up. <laughs> So, you know, so, and, and they were right. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to go up to that level. They're like, but you know, let's just, let's put your best package up there that you can do. And they fixed all the little things they could. This was the judging feedback, you know, and I did fix my posing, fix all that stuff. And um, yeah, I got my ass handed to me when I went to nationals, but it, you know, it, it was a good thing for me to do that too, because I saw what I needed to do to improve. So it's okay to do those kinds of things, but realize if you're not ready, you're going to get your ass handed to you, you know, and yeah. I, I did, I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> So it's a much better indicator um, of, of where you're going to fall going from a regional show to a national show versus a local to a national, if that makes sense. Even, and even nationals to nationals. I just did a consult again a, a couple weeks ago. This girl went to uh, Olympia Amateur in 2020, okay, mm -hmm. so the year of COVID, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have to keep that in mm -hmm. mind that year, mm -hmm. okay? She got second in her class. Her feedback was to grow her glutes a little bit more. She actually ended up coming out this year. So what, we're in 2023, three years later. Mm -hmm. And she got 10th place, I think. So she she did worse. So we did a consult and she's like, what did I do wrong? I said, nothing. I said, but yeah. here's a couple of things. In 2020, that was years ago. Okay, yes. so the bikini criteria every year Change. now has only gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and changing. Yeah. The second thing is in 2020, not everybody's physiques were hundred percent. Everybody was doing their gym work That's or their right. home workouts and they didn't really have access to gym. So everybody's physiques at that time were not the top level that they are today. Mm -hmm. Now that we're all back in our gyms. And the, the third thing I said is you did grow your glutes a little bit more, but now you're still small, right? So yeah. she's like, yeah, these girls in my class, they were huge and they are. So, you know, it just depends on timelines and you know, if you're going to take three years off of stage, that's great to grow, but make sure you stay up with the change of the that's criteria right. because it's going to keep evolving and it's going to keep changing. Okay. And I love time off from the stage for amateurs. Most of the time we need at least one to two years of off season when we're an amateur to really grow that pro worthy physique, but don't just disconnect yourself. Stay on top, go see shows, go watch the national shows and stream them online and see what they're picking. So you're like, okay, so that was my feedback, but this is now what they're picking. And you can kind of put that together for yourself. Also, okay. your coach should be able to help you with that. Um, if you have a, a, a good coach yeah. that's been, you know, following the sport, obviously, but if you're self coaching in a longer off season or something like that, that's your responsibility then at that point yep. to be your own coach and stay up on top of that, that research. That's right. Absolutely. All right. So last one goes into that is, can you turn pro without PEDs? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can it's turn pro without pee. It's, it's very simple. It just means that you are going to have to be very on top of all of your parameters mm -hmm. and be patient. Yep. It's going to take you a little bit longer than somebody yep. who is enhanced to put on the muscle, the tissue, and the density. 
And you cannot afford slip ups in your diet and your training. You have to be on top of your diet. You have to be on top of your training and you have to be patient, but is 100% possible in the bikini division to go pro without these. Yep. Absolutely. That's exactly what I said. So <laughs> again, it's like, yep. it's almost like we know what we're talking about almost. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, it's sad that we've gotten into this in this part of this sport where it's like we're starting and then we put someone on gear right yeah. away. Um, yeah. You know, I don't care whether the athletes like I don't care, you know, what what I do. I just want to turn pro. I'm still not the coach to be like, let's put you on everything in the kitchen. Right. We're I'm back. <laughs> so you were saying um, uh, what you're going to do with the, with the that, athlete first. Yes. So I, I just, I don't like that coaches just go to that right away. And also for the athlete too, like this is what Drew was saying. It's almost like a cop out. Like yeah. we want you as a coach to work for it. Right. We want, you know, work hard and maximize everything that you can out the gate with your nutrition and training. Newbie gains, newbie gains are a thing. They are, they are 100% a thing. So when you mm -hmm. go from even CrossFit to this sport, your body is going to respond to the different level of training, intensity, sets, reps, et cetera. Maximize all of that and earn it if you eventually want to hop on Pete someday. Yep. Um, but yes, absolutely, you can turn pro without it. 100%. And I would say even in some, not just bikini, I would say even I've, I know girls that have done it naturally in wellness. I know girls that have done it naturally in figure. And we're talking about current state of affairs, too. I'm not talking about 10 years ago when I went pro. I'm talking about current state of affairs. So yeah. it's absolutely possible because, again, genetic potential outweighs everything else. You know, yes. if you have if you have shitty genetics, putting you on PEDs is just going to make you bigger with still shitty genetics. <laughs> like it, just, it just is what it is. So, I mean, if you can maximize, like you said, newbie gains, maximize your potential, maximize everything that you have first, do all of your natural stuff first, and then take a step back and look at yes. it and say, do I want to go further? You know, again, it's, it's, it's a personal decision. It's whatever you decide to do, but take advantage of what God gave you first. <laughs> We live in the world where everybody wants what they want and they want it yeah, right now. Absolutely. Unfor unfortunately, bodybuilding then is never going to be your sport. That's right. I was just talking about this with another. I've had so many consults over the last week. I've had I was talking about this with another it's woman. Year. Jen it's Dorley, year. when she wins the Olympia, still gets feedback after the Olympia. That's right. Things that she needs to work on. Mm -hmm. This is a never ending sport of improvement and needing to change something. Absolutely. So if you want to turn pro tomorrow based off of, you know, zero work ethic and not putting in your time in the sport, this isn't going to be the sport for you. You're going to that's need right. something that's going to, that's going to tap into here more, more than bodybuilding does. Bodybuilding is the challenge because of the mental fortitude with patience and mm -hmm. training and discipline that you have to acquire in order to become successful. That's right. And it's, that's it's, the a, of it. it's a lifestyle change is a lifestyle thing that you're going to do if you just want to do the things so you can get on stage like go do something else you know what i mean Correct. like this is not... enjoy the journey that's right so i tell people all the time i'm like the stage is like one of the worst days i don't i i mean i enjoy being on stage don't get me wrong but i hate the way i feel at that point you know what i mean yes. like i i feel my best like now like not when i got my period but like now is when i feel my best you know i feel athletic and strong oh, nice. and all those kinds of things. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the joy of bodybuilding. It's not the getting on stage part. And if you're doing it just to look like that, you're going to feel like shit. For the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to feel like shit. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just part of it. So you, you, you got to understand that it's, it's the lifestyle you have to fall in love with first. And that yeah. does not, that does not include PEDs at all when it comes to right. the lifestyle of it. It just doesn't. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, Absolutely. moving on to the lifestyle of it, um, we have this is our last podcast of the twenty of twenty twenty three. Wow! So I know, crazy, right? Um, so we're going into twenty twenty four. So we have a lot of things coming up for twenty twenty four. We've already got the pro league schedule out. I talked about that a little bit on my um, my uh, live last night, and we've got the Arnold coming up too. Um, you have never been to the Arnold before. I haven't. Um, I was telling you last night that the one year I was supposed to go to the Arnold was 2020. And then literally the week that the world shut down yeah. was Arnold. So our, everything got canceled. So I have never been there as an attendee. I've obviously never competed in it. So 
Yeah. I'm uh, I watch it every year. We we stream it every year, so obviously excited to watch it. But I'm uh, I'm impressed with the le- the list this year. I think it was mm-hmm. a little bit um I, I was expecting some some bigger names on the list, but yeah. I actually like that it, it kind of has a good mix this year right. and kind of seeing how some of the newer girls come in and whatnot. So I think it's gonna be interesting. I'm really happy and excited to see it. I do too. I think, and and I'll, I'm going to go into a deep dive of the of the, the competitors and stuff too. But I like the fact that there's no like straight up front runner in this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's gonna make it's exactly. gonna make it it's fun. An and we don't really. I mean, there's yeah. a couple of shows that are prior to um, that are in in uh, February. So there's a couple of shows. So I doubt any of these girls will get on stage between now and then. Between now and the the Arnold, they'll probably just come out to the Arnold. So we don't really yeah. know who's going to come in and, and do anything. Like, I, I mean, it could no. be somebody completely off our radar, you know, yeah. and then automatically they become, they become on the radar when it comes to, you know, going into Olympia and all that kind of stuff too. So this could be really, really, this year could really shake it up big time. Big Absolutely. Time. So, and you um, said you go every year, so you'll be going. Yeah. So the only year, well, I've, I've missed a couple and I did not go the year 2020 because I was planning on going and then everything shut down. Um, so I was like, well, what's the point? I'm like, I don't even know if like the, the, the we knew we, the, we knew there wasn't going to be an expo. We knew that we didn't even know if we could get in to actually see the shows because they were talking about potentially canceling the shows, but then if they're going to have the shows, no spectators. So it ended up being, right. that, it ended up being that they had the shows, but no spectators. So I'm glad I didn't go because I would have just been sitting there in the hotel. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, that was the one, the one year, like in recent years that I haven't gone, but I've gone since 2010. So it's funny. I was showing you wow. I had a whole album, album on my Facebook from 2010. And I look back on it. That was the year, you know, that I had been competing for two years at that point. Um, Nicole Wilkins won it that year. That was a bit like a big thing for me. I loved her. I loved her. I loved Aaron Stern, um, Ava Cowan, all the girls from back then. So I've literally been going every single year and it's um, for the most part, it's been pretty much the same every year as far as like the hype and how big it is, all that kind of stuff, except for the year right after 2020, because they did it in September, right before the Olympia. That's right. And all they had was bodybuilding. Yeah. That was it. So they had that's right. Like they had like five, six booths or something like that there. And that was it. And like, I'll be honest, that was one of the most fun years I've ever been there because it was just bodybuilding people and that's it. There was no other sports there. There was no other big expo there and all that kind of stuff. So we literally would go to the shows and then we just sit around and hang out and chill and like bullshit all day long. So it was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, that was one of the, that was one of the most fun years I've ever been to the, to the Arnold. Um, I have gone several times with the, where the expo has been enormous, like enormous, enormous, enormous. This past year it was, it was bigger again. Um, they've started adding a lot more of um, different events in there, like the Strongman and, and all those kinds of things too. But the those events are getting bigger, like slap fighting and stuff like that too is getting really, really big. So those are actually kind of taking over some of the the attention, um, which is cool, but that's not what I'm there for. <laughs> You know, right. um, I'm not yeah. even really there for the expo, you know, like I walk, I, you know, I walked around the expo a little bit, but it's like, you know, I've seen protein bars a thousand times, you know what I mean? So I'm not really there for that either. I'm just there for the shows themselves. So, for the show. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. I, 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 are you going to do a live commentary? Yeah. It's part of media for this past year. If they accept my application this year, <laughs> I just sent it in yesterday. So we'll see. Um, I don't know. Every year they change, kind of change their policies and stuff as far as what they're allowing, what they're not. So we'll see if I get accepted or not. Um, but I did get accepted last year. So that was cool. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun actually. I really enjoyed that because I, I was there for the reason why I was there. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just sure. It was it was it was fun. I didn't have to. I don't know. I wasn't. I was. And I, I hate to say it this way, but I wasn't a fan last year. I was there to really work last year, and that was really I I enjoyed that. So um, I'm hoping that I get to do that again this year. If not, I'll still do it regardless. But you know, <laughs> it'd just be nice to be uh, to be able to actually be on media, which would be good. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes this year um, as far as the media aspect of it is concerned. I will still definitely cover it for my channels and everything, too. just a matter of if I'm going to actually be on the media team or not. Um, but it's it's if you've never been, it's definitely something you need to go experience, especially as a bodybuilding fan. Um, it's just it's it is probably five times the size of the Olympia as far as how oh, wow. many people are there and things like that. It's huge. 
Drew just um, said, are they you have going? A whole, I don't know. Do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? There's a whole segment that they have off site that's like the fairgrounds or something. I've never even been there. So I don't, I don't know. But the, the actual expo itself is enormous. Um, and again, this past year was getting closer to the size that it used to be. Um, it's not been that size since before COVID. Um, but it still was pretty big this past year. Um, and like I said, it's not just bodybuilding. So if you're interested in any of the other sports and stuff like that too, it's all there. It's a, it's a huge expo. It's really cool. The thing, the thing that's hard about it is it's Columbus in March. So like it's hit or miss when it comes to weather. Um, and I go, depending on, depending on what the flights are and not even the price of flights, but like the availability of flights, I'll either fly or I'll drive because it's the same amount of, of cost and distance Time basically. Yeah. 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 So, um, I like being able to drive because then I have the ability to kind of go when I want. Um, so I do like that aspect of it, but if it's going to be snowing and stuff, sometimes it's better to fly. So it just depends. It depends on the availability and stuff like that. Usually I drive, usually I drive. Um, okay. And almost always there's a snowstorm at some point. <laughs> there was there was one year when I was driving home um, and it was like, I was in my, I had a Volkswagen bug at the time. And I was like, and I was like skidding all over the road. I'm like, I literally went off the road and back on. <laughs> wow, <laughs> like, that's scary. That's like the worst car in the snow too. I know. Well, and there was another year where we were driving up and, um, again snow but it wasn't it wasn't no storm when we were driving but the 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 snow plow had had plowed the snow on the interstate so there was a, like a, a bank of snow in the interstate and like i could see it and i'm like there's nothing i can do it was a cross and i hit it and went into the median like but immediately went into the median got stuck because it was snow there was snow and i couldn't get out it was a big i had a big truck too and i couldn't get out but right behind me was a was a cop and so he pulled over we got a um a tow truck in and I was out in 20 minutes. Like my well, there was nothing, there was nothing wrong. Right behind you. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with the vehicle. I just got stuck because I couldn't get out because of the snow. And wow. so literally within 20 minutes I was out of the snowbank and on my way again. <laughs> it's like, got lucky that time. Yeah. yeah. And you know, back in the day, they used to have the way they used to set this up is the bodybuilding was in a different theater than um, than the actual expo center. So you had to go across Columbus to go to the actual bodybuilding show and all that. You don't have to do that now. Oh, um, thank God. And it's always if you can get into the, the hotels that are attached to the convention center, it is a thousand times better to go there than anywhere else. Um, it's more expensive, but you don't have to go outside. You don't have to drive anywhere. You don't have to wait for shuttles. You don't have to wait for any of those kinds of things. So I always like, I already have my room booked already. Um, because as soon as they come available, I go and book my room because I just, I'm not going to deal with all that stuff. Um, no, it's worth the extra money when it's convenient. Yeah. You don't have to Uber everywhere. Like you save money that way, you know? Yep. And then you've got the powerhouse gym that's right down the street. So you can go train oh, there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Which is an experience, okay, well, by the way. <laughs> that's I'll an experience. Know, it's full. Yeah. Like, and everybody trains there, you know? So you got, I, I, I try to go like when other stuff's going on, like when the expo is going on, because then it's not as busy. Because if you try to go when like the expo is out or like later, later in the afternoon or whatever, you are not getting on equipment. It's not happening. It's like a crunch fitness there. <laughs> yeah, it's friggin' terrible. It's no, a, again, again, it's an experience because all the big guys are there, all that kind of stuff. So you get to see them train and all that kind of stuff. But it's just frustrating for those of us who actually want to train. <laughs> And I'm an athlete too. And I don't like to be looked at like an animal, like a caged yeah. animal when I'm training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I would rather just let those guys be and do their yeah. thing and go find somewhere up the street. That's a little bit quieter. Yeah. So, you know, if you, again, if you go during the expo time, cause that's what I typically will do. So I'll go, like, I'll go to prejudging, do the commentary, all that kind of stuff, leave, go get my, change my clothes, go train and then come back and go to the um the finals or whatever the show, you know what yeah. i mean so it works out well that way because it's not packed because again the people that would be training there are getting ready to go compete or whatever so sure. you know they're not going to be completely packed out so it's, it's a lot easier to do that um, so anyone that's going take notes <laughs> yeah yeah go in the off hours if you actually want to get training in if you want to see everybody yeah. you want to see everybody train then go during the times when everybody will be there but right. that, that's not what i'm there for so Oh my God. We won't I'm see there. you there at that time. No, yes. no I'm, there, I'm there to train. I'm there to train. So, exactly. Um, but yeah, but it's it's definitely an experience. If you've never gone, you need to go for sure. You need to go. So it's it's again, it's one that I go to every single year, every single year. So maybe you'll see us there this year. Yeah, yeah. It's in March, right? 
Yeah. March, first, uh, first week, first week in March. Yeah. I think it's, I think first it starts March. on like, yeah, it starts like February 28th through whatever that weekend is, whatever it okay. is. So, okay. um, and then I should hopefully be rested by then at some point. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> the time goes by fast. I mean, it really does. I mean, I once can't we believe we're almost three weeks from cuties, two weeks two. from cuties. Two. Two. Yeah. Trust me, it's two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you're counting. Trust me, it's two. <laughs> I know you're counting down. Oh my God, it's crazy. So it goes really, really fast. So, um, but with that, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap it up so that you can get get your drive continued here. Where are you right now? I think we're in. Uh, where are we? New Mexico, almost. Okay, where are we? Texas. We're in Texas somewhere. <laughs> We're in Texas, somewhere in Texas. <laughs> Literally, there you go. That's what I got. Oh, that's I love favorite. it. That's, I love that's it. what we're going to be looking at for another uh, seven, uh, 10 hours, 10, oh. almost 11 hours. Great. <laughs> well, you guys stop every couple hours to get out and stretch, right? Oh, yeah. And these guys got to pee. Yeah, I was going to say, the dogs. Oh, these, look these at them. Are, they're laying, they have their own Casper mattress. Right oh, I love it. They're they're traveling in style. They're like, we're good. We're good. We can do this okay, every day. Okay, so I did give them trazodone. Um, well, the, the vet, the vet. Get, <laughs> yes, so yes, yes, we, yes. We gave it to them. We so when we we decided we were leaving, we gave it to them. The the vet told us to do it the day before we were leaving. So we gave it to them the night before, and you're supposed to give it to them every eight to ten hours. So yesterday, I mean, my my big one, he couldn't even like know how to pee like he like i put him Aww. in the grass and he was just like what do i do <laughs> he was Aww. so cute so we let it fully come off last night and then i gave him just like a little dose this morning but they've been so good like Aww. at every stop and it's it's that was what i was stressed about was them but they've been awesome so it's it's been a fairly easy ride we made one wrong turn yesterday and accidentally went through louisiana instead of this other way. So we added another 50 minutes, uh, um, but we were right. on the phone with the mirror company dealing with them uh, and not paying attention to our phones. So yep. that was, the, that was the only hiccup so far. So okay. I, um, I'm going to be very interested to see these two in Jamie and Greg's house tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, They're goodness. welcome. So we'll see. <laughs> That's funny. Cause I was looking through Facebook memories and this today, uh, five years ago was when we got Dolly. So we went to Indiana to go pick her up. We, we flew to Indiana and then we drove drove home with her. So like we, there all these videos and stuff are popping up in my my Facebook memories of her like sitting on my shoulder while we were driving and like us when we stopped at the at the hotel or whatever and her just going nuts. So so yeah, the pups, the pups, they they're, they're our biggest our biggest worry. <laughs> I'm down. Oh, you're go. back. You can't can can hear I'm me. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. I can hear you. you. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Got it for a couple more seconds. <laughs> That's okay. We got we got it. We're wrapping up anyway, so we're we doing good. It. We're good. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's our signal to to let you go and continue your continue your drive out. I'm glad that we're able to get this in um, before the new year, and uh, you'll have to keep us yes. updated on how uh, updated how it goes once you get to Arizona. I will, I will, and happy new year, everybody. We are we're so excited about yes. the podcast and to continue it. We have big big plans for it, so yes, I'm just excited. We're gonna start to with Spotify too, resettled. so. Yes, yeah, we're gonna start exactly. once we get this get this rolling for for real. Once you get resettled and all that stuff, we'll get it up on Spotify, um, and we'll have this rolling for the new year. So, um, with that, we're gonna sign out for episode eighteen. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so that you know when these these go live, so you can listen and watch. And uh, we'll be back again next week. And happy new year. <laughs> <laughs>